ready when you are. Yes, we are ready. Sorry for the delay. We had something come up. This is Jack Napier, Red Pill Reads, episode 18, together with Ryan Stone. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Ryan, stirring the coffee with the Vortex method. The only oh true method to optimize, optimize the taste of his coffee at the <laughs> molecular level. How are you doing? Let me explain very slowly how I'm doing with many words that make you feel good. ASMR, old man. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> 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 yes, this is going to be one of these shows. Hey, I know I always fluff people, but you know one thing I really love about this show is um, there'll be I get I feel like I've read the books that you talk about before I get on, but the thing is, I always have to come back and remember them now because you're like, all right, we're talking about wisdom of psychopath, and it'd been like six, seven months since I read it, but you just read it, so I'm like, geez, I hope I can really remember what I think I remember. So you kind of almost put me to task and show if I've like forgotten too much that I got to get back into it. Ah, so I, I guess my, I thank you. <laughs> I do my best. Well, with no more Mr. Nice Guy, it's been a while since I've read it as well. It's just a lot I remember about it. So mm. I think the first thing we have to do is what is a nice guy to us? Oh, is that a question or is that just yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Top? <laughs> that I always like the nice guy. I think Glover puts it best when he talks about it as covert contracts. I I do nice things for you in expectation of reciprocity. And then when that doesn't happen, nice guy gets resentful. I mean, that's really it if you boil it down to its essentials. Yeah, a man who negotiates desire and gets resentful when his expectations are not met. Yeah. Kind of makes sense when people talk about guys being raised as defective girls, because that is really how a defective girl would think. <laughs> I should so I shouldn't poke fun. It is, and that's the thing. It's so common and pervasive now. That's why I hate to say it, and I'm sorry, Rolo, but I, I actually love Glover's book more than Rational Male First Year, as far as like the practicality of what he offers in there. Well, it is a practice. It is. I mean, Rolo's book is more of the theory. Mm -hmm. And we all agree on that. That has been said multiple times, and game is the practice. However, when it comes to LTRs and things like that, and the stuff you do, no more Mr. Nice Guy is just almost like a manual. True. I would say single guys too, though, if you map it to it. I mean, when you think about those guys that hit on girls at bars, take girls out to dinner or like drinks, and then they don't get sex, and they get kind of angry about it, mm -hmm. they have those same covert contracts. They're just having a new one with each new girl. Yeah, absolutely. And not only with girls, but also in their relationship with their parents, their friends, siblings, things like that. Everything to nice guys is a covert contract. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the funny thing, too. I love it when you can tell a guy gets it because he, he first off does this because he wants to get girls. And then after a while, he kind of notices that the same strategies and mental models he uses to get girls with this applies in the real life, too. And then he realizes like it wasn't about getting girls. It was about getting yourself right. Just one of those little things I find is very interesting. Uh, or selling $1,500 tickets. <laughs> I wish them all the best in future endeavors and hope a long and successful business. And I want to thank them very kindly for all the work that we've done together to help men. <laughs> Signed, Ryan Stone. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> is that the, the, the official professional statement? Yep. <laughs> wow. I'm honored to have it on my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's strange. It just, like I said, this whole thing reminds me of Upstream, if you remember that from back in the day. Nobody does, but nobody will remember this either. At the end of the day, only thing people are going to remember is how they learned about Wisdom of Psychopath and No More Mr. Nice Guy from you, or how I wrote about five different ways that chicks manipulate them. At the end of the day, that's all that counts, right? Yeah, and for the time being, just enjoy the decline, I guess. Like, keep on shit posting. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Do not share those memes. It's very unprofessional. <laughs> Don't do that. Damn, you guys. I have done my best to block as many of them as I can, but occasionally a few make it through, and some of you guys are downright savage. <laughs> I just had a field day yesterday. Oh, man. <laughs> I was just pissed off. I mean, someone blocked me who I openly respected on Twitter. I just openly stated I respect the man, and then he goes on and blocks me because I favor Rolo's book more than his stirring the coffee. And I'm like, oh, you know, you know what? Operation Scorched Earth right now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's so sad. No, I mean, it really is when you think about it. I think I did a thing yesterday on this where 
um, this is why the women won the gender war. Like guys, yeah. we just, we have skills. We're very good at competition. We're very good at thriving in small tribes with singular missions. The problem is now there's so many people and there's so many different tribes. We're kind of like in a tribe matrix that it's almost impossible for guys to organize in any meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Add to that, that right now, the best attitude for a guy to have is a healthy level of narcissism, which gets in the way of being cordial and teamworks. It makes sense that girls, how they would automatically team with other girls, regardless of what happens, how they would just crush us in yeah, society. It's, just, it's the sisterhood Uber Allen. We don't have a brotherhood Uber Allen. We don't. Yep. Yeah, we're just yeah. not wired for it. Wow. We're way too, we're way too competitive for all of this. Mm-hmm. I always think of that the same way I think of diabetes. Like we're hardwired for carbs. Back then when you had to chew on a sugar cane to get any carbs, it was great. But now that chocolate cake is two bucks, we're basically just hardwired for diabetes now. Just gorging away. When you think about it, modern masculinity is kind of dealing with how do we, how do we hone our base nature into something more beneficial to us? Isn't it getting control of instant gratification? Oh, that's part of it too. But hmm. well, that's just it. It's like basically fighting your fighting your hardwiring, and I think our our excessive need for competition is one of those things we also kind of have to. Well, I guess we don't have to. It's always possible to be lone wolf right now, but yeah, whatever. None of this really has to do with Glover anyway. No, true. Although your work, especially with married red pill and things like that, you keep recommending this one. So number one, first book to read. Yeah. Like it's in your map, right? The uh, male action plan. Mm -hmm. What in the book was something you encountered in your work as well? Like in chapter two, he talks about the making of the nice guy. And is that really something you uh, get in touch with on a daily basis when helping with clients? Oh, oh daily. Daily is not even question of daily it's a question of like the first six months it's constant it's always that it's uh so no guy ever comes to find some random dude on the internet to give him advice until he's tried everything else and usually everything else involves you know i'll try this does that make her do this it's all very reactive if i try a will she do b if i try c will she do d mm -hmm. and then the problem is that they're all very obviously manipulative so once you try to be and i always joke around with this with the wife like as soon as I tell you what to do, you're not going to do it just to spite me. So you can't tell people what to do. Like they have this innate bias against manipulation, that like very obvious and overt manipulation. Mm -hmm. So the more a guy thinks he's going to be a nice guy and trying not to manipulate people, he ends up doing these manipulative tactics and then they end up getting more and more frustrated. And that's always how I start the calls. Like, all right, so what got you so desperate that you had to talk to a random dude on the internet? <laughs> Yeah, and That's then they find out it's all covert contracts. And when you realize when a guy's taking his map, the best the best attitude I've seen guys take is where they do, I call it Operation Scorched Earth, essentially. It's just like the Spartans. I'm already dead. I'm going to go fight to see if I can stay alive. Like your relationship is dead. She, uh, she killed it. You killed it. Whoever killed it doesn't matter. Right now, you're just going to, oh, yeah, you, you don't mind swearing on your channel, right? Absolutely not. Go ahead. Yeah, you're going to unfuck yourself and you're going to make a deal with you from 12 months from now. And that deal is in 12 months, I'm going to make you the highest value man that I can so that you can make the hard decision about who stays and goes in your life. The girl at this point is no longer a wife. She's no longer a girlfriend. She's a sparring partner. And then it actually helps because the guy's able to map his covert contracts out more effectively because it's no longer a girl your ego invested in. It's no longer a relationship that your ego is validated by, you know, keeping together. It's just a strict, okay, so what value does this person bring to my life and what am I doing in ex expectations of reciprocity and how do I deal with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, God, I'm getting, I'm getting those Rolo level answers today. This is awesome. Yeah. That's a <laughs> What's good. a period and a comma? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, not, it's not nice to do, joke about his grammar in the first book. Oh, I stopped making fun of his cancer, so that's good. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. How is he doing? Oh, he marvelous, marvelously pulled through. Now that he's got the strength, everybody's going after him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Luckily, a lot of us still stand with Rolo. Yeah, yeah. I love okay. that. Dude, I've nobody nobody builds a nice house with that while they're smashing the while you're smashing the foundation. And that's the way I look at it. 
anybody going after stuff just seems very strange or expecting him to do more. Mm -hmm. It's like, he's got his thing. He's foundation work. Just let him be a foundation. If you want something better, build on top of it. It's not hard. Yeah. Build on the shoulders of giants. You've been posting yeah. that all week. Instead, everybody else wants to, wants to put their Michael Jordan poster on their wall. Then they get mad when Michael Jordan isn't as cool as they thought he was. I'm like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have a poster on your wall then. I'll just be glad he wasn't a three fifteen pound guy with a, with a wife beater tank top. Dude, that's a good memory. <laughs> I know, right? That was one of the first things you stated on Redman Group. You were like, when I first met Rolo, I was so glad he wasn't 315 pounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, I don't expect Superman, but just please don't be the guy who made all this up, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, how amazing would that be when he stands there with his wife, his white wife beater with the grease stain on the chest? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that would have been so awesome. I, I don't know what I would have done. I honestly don't. Bought a rope? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, I'd be fine. I would just write my own rational mail book. Yeah, why not? Call it The Lovable so, Asshole. <laughs> the Lovable Asshole. Well, that is a nice What, that's a book? Dot com. No, no, no. That would be a nice title of a book. Yeah. I can go in that Aaron Clary uh, audience. Yeah. My Aaron is coming next week. Is he? That's going to be awesome. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. My drunken bigger brother. Your older brother. Yeah. Like, I can, you can join if you like. I can ask him. Um, that would be fun. Yeah, we'll see how time works. Three like people. I always hate my schedule. Yeah. If I don't have it on front of me, I don't know idea what's going on. I don't want to double book, but that would be awesome. Yeah, I won't. I promise I won't fuck it up this time. I have multiple things planned, and I was like, yeah, the time zone is like that. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Well, it turned out it quite didn't. Oh, that's <laughs> fine. I took the family to Niagara Falls, and then we were up till like midnight, one o'clock. I'm like, that's perfect. I can do that and get up for eight. And then. At seven, at six fifty, call like oh, all right. So much for sleeping Oops. in till seven. But <laughs> well, the dogs were awake anyway, right? Six. Oh yeah, like they that. don't know what a weekend is. They just know six thirty is meal time. Oh, good thing. Well, uh, about the whole COVID contract things, and so chapter three: learn to please yourself. Like, mm. A lot of guys still don't get that. You, everything we do, is not especially for women. Like is kind of for getting women to not necessarily get what you want them to do because you can't tell people what they want to do, but react to you in the way that you want. But it all starts with you wanting to make yourself happy. Yeah, what do you want? Oh, it's the craziest thing. I have never talked to somebody and gotten a straight answer to, okay, so and they a little talk. Every guy can talk about his problems all day. Rant about it, who did them wrong, who did what, and then you ask, okay, so what do you want? Like wave a magic wand. What do you want here? Never been able to get a straight answer from a guy because they never thought about it in that way. And that's why I love this chapter. Mm -hmm. And even the, I almost want to call it my own breaking free activity because I was looking at his one here where it's just looking over the list of, uh, you know, behaviors that are uniquely you. It's, I didn't find it mapped quite as well as just asking a guy what he wants. Yeah, like in the end, uh, as recovering nice guys release their toxic shame and start seeking their own approval, they begin to realize several important truths. They are not bad. They don't have to do anything to win other people's approval. They don't have to hide their perceived flaws or mistakes. People can love them just the way they are. Like they finally learn that not necessarily the whole be yourself shtick, but yeah. more the not everybody will like you, so live with it. Yeah, pretty much. Are you getting what you want out of this interaction? I remember it was an old, uh, I can't remember if it was Mystery or Tyler Durden or who, but they had a, a conversation trick, like how people were going like, why would she talk to me? She's too hot. And he had the attitude of, okay, so when you're approaching a person and talking to them, assume that after your conversation, they get $200. And he goes right there. It automatically sets your guys, like you set your mind to think, okay, no matter what happens, they're getting value out of this interaction. And it would calm guys down. So they could stop looking about like looking to get seek approval from people. Which, and let's face it, if you're picking up a girl, seeking her approval is probably the least attractive way to do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, I've turned that around. I'm, and you and I talked about this before, and this goes into chapter four: make mm -hmm. your needs a priority as well. Like, remember when I told you that uh, I'm not a very big going out kind of guy, and especially picking up chicks and having to deal with. Uh, them not uh, them not valuing me while I have multiple plates already valuing me. 
I just don't yeah. see the need in that. Like uh, you had that story about the guy who had a four at home and who had that going out as well. Like he got rejected by an eight and he was just like, nah, I don't need to take your shit. I have a woman at home who would love to please me right now. Even oh, if yeah, she's not true. as pretty as you, at least she's got the decency to suck dick. Well, that's how abundance happens. And it's just like a constant, like stepping up a little ladder progression. And I loved it because he came at it with no, it was so much humility. It's like, this is a real guy too. This isn't just some like parable I made up, but yeah. And he found that out. He's like, I've never, I haven't hit on a girl since he said like 94 or some crazy number like that. And so he goes, I really didn't know what I was doing. So he found literally like the, the least attractive girl he could still be attracted to. And then he started there and she was happy to see him and builds from there. Oh. But that's just it. And that's, that's the funny thing when you, um, a lot of guys have approach anxiety, so I always tell them, like, practice, like, hit on a girl you don't even like, that you don't want to pick up, and that you don't want to sleep with. <laughs> because then you're not so focused on the end result or getting approval seeking. You're just practicing on, okay, I just want to hold a conversation with the person and then, you know, exit it without giving her too much. Well, it'll probably end up her asking your name. Sometimes it happens, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. The beauty about last-minute resistance yeah. and, and women's innate anti-slut defenses is that uh like if you don't want to sleep with a girl she will give you every opportunity to allow that to happen <laughs> even if she's into you it's like the complete opposite of what you always say find a reason mm -hmm. to next her <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the relationship one. the plate one you just find a girl you don't even want but then once you got one then you find a reason to get rid of her <laughs> <laughs> you know what you know what the most insane thing about that is every and um, you try to find something and you just know they can do it, but they don't do it. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to find a reason to next you. Give me one. And they just won't give you one. You're like, God damn it. Dan, it's funny. Yeah, because you don't it focus isn't... anymore on getting her approval. You focus more on what you bring to the table, like your value. And then that's the problem is yeah. that once you've internalized that, you have that attitude like you had. And you're bringing enough value that people are acting their best. And so they just don't give you a reason anymore. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's a whole table mm -hmm. flip. Like, you don't want their approval. You want them to get your approval. Yep. It's funny how so simple yet so deep at the same time. Or, or so simple and or so easy and so hard at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it takes a guy like six to 12 months sometimes to get to that simple place that you can just say in a couple sentences. And you've yeah, already well, it, so for you. It's like breathing, like whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it takes a village. Like, I wasn't like this every since I was born, you know, like I had to go through the rage and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got dumped a couple of times, a couple of, a lot of times actually, just because oh, yeah. of the whole thing. You have to please women, blah, 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 and be nice to them. And well, everybody already knows that, but now I'm just at that point, like I'm a high value guy. I don't have everything I want yet, but I'm getting there. So if you want to hop along, Prove your worth. And if you don't, well, fine with me. Go get your mm. eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have you ever said that to a plate? Because that's a lot of fun. Like, I have a plate right now, and she's bratty. She really is bratty, and I'm enjoying it. Because now I can use all my witty remarks. And uh, what was it again? It was like... I said something to her and she was like, well, what if I don't think like that about you? And I just looked her in the eye and was like, well, there's the door, get your eyes checked and get back to me when you have the proper glasses. Dude, I wish I, was that, I wish I was that clever. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise this isn't working. And she just looked at me with that, with that, oh my God face of hers, like you said <clears throat> what? And I just sat there with a shitty and grin and everything was awesome. Yeah, I just remember, I guess the best story I have is I'm not nearly as witty in that kind of stuff. I was just more direct, but same kind of thing. Like, I remember um, there was this girl that was a plate of my buddy, Mike, which I write about him all the time. He was my wingman back when I was doing pickup heavy. Mm -hmm. um, she ended up sleeping with me. But I remember this first story was she was jealous of my cousin because he thought she was cute. And mm -hmm. so we, she called her a whore. And I'm like, look, you call her that again. I'm kicking you out of my house. And that was my boundary enforcement. She goes, and she plays that, you know, what do you mean? I didn't know what I said. I just called her a whore. So I remember I grabbed her by the arm, threw her out of my place, grabbed my purse and bounced it off her ass when she was on the ground. <laughs> and anyway, she became a plate about a week later. Ooh, those are the best ones. 
But here's the thing, like it wasn't even amused mastery. Like I was, I treated her badly and the worse I treated her, the more she liked it. Like I, I never even used her name. I called her the dog walker because she used to walk dogs for the SPCA because I thought if I gave her a name, there's a chance I could get feelings for her and I just didn't like her. And I'd like kick her out of my place and after all this stuff, I just basically, and I remember one point I even broke character. I'm like, dude, why do you let me treat you like this? And she's like, oh, I don't know, it's fun. I'm like, all right. Continue then. Yeah. <clears throat> it lasted a little bit. I mean, at that time I was also plating the girl who's now my wife and a girl who was, well, not quite a stripper, but she used to do like uh, stripping bachelor parties and that. So at the same thing, I was like, at this time I could switch you out for anybody else. And, Man, girl's got to make a living, I guess. Oh, whatever. I'm not faulting her for it. It's mm-hmm. just funny now because I think I still have her on Facebook and now she's like a proud mom with a nice dad. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> like every girl on my morning. Facebook, I'm surprised they still have me on there because I knew them when they were in their in their thoughtery in their 20s. And now I see them out mm-hmm. being like good family people with, and they always have that same like generic looking guy as their husband. Like, yeah, like balding, a little bit Bob. chubby, but really nice and sweet. and <laughs> yeah. A Bob. Those guys really look like Bobs to me. Yeah. And not the Bob as bitch tits, but more like Bob from IT. Yeah, generic Bob. <laughs> yeah. Just Bob from IT. That's a new one, I guess. Mm-hmm. We've got Kevin from Sales, Bob from IT, and which one was the other one? Oh, geez. Um... Chad from Accounting. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I just remember, Which is the most boring one, actually. Dude, that's my favorite thing about being in this space. Like, there's been a few times where I kind of turn a clever phrase and then it's kind of caught on. Although I think, did Donovan always use Kevin from sales? Donovan used Kevin from sales. You used Chan from accounting or something like that. Well, no, I used I used Kevin from, or Kevin from accounting. I just got to go check the emails again. But did he use it before 2017? I don't think he did. Okay, he might have got that from me. <laughs> Dips. <Dips. laughs> <laughs> but it's nice. It just means that things are catching on. If you can make it a little clever and yeah, people but, take it and it spreads out. But isn't that like the manosphere bit? Just a giant boys club with, uh, with with our little codes and things like that. Our little treehouse. Oh, yeah. No girls allowed. Like sign language, <laughs> LTRs, AFC. Kevin from sales. Oh yeah, our little jargon. What's what makes things uh, <laughs> Tyrone. <laughs> Like it's good for shorthand so people can talk about complex topics without having to uh, explain what the heck it means when you say Kevin from sales. Mm -hmm. But it also is a way of letting guys know like, oh yeah, I've read the same stuff. So you have that certain commonality. It's standard community building stuff. Yeah, and that's the talk at the water cooler where guys are looking you in the eyes like, do you read the same things I do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and here's the funny part too. So, and this is something else that comes up. You can tell when a guy's just here for that clubhouse and he's not actually reading because that is exactly what they talked about in the chapter three or chapter four, where uh, they talk about uh, seeking approval, and that's ex- and it manifests there too, which I find funny. Um, Guys talk about how they are red pill or they are in this space, but uh, then you start asking them questions like, "Do you understand what this thing means when I talk about hypergamy, or in this case, a covert contract?" And they don't know because they actually didn't read the material; they're just sticking with the shorthand. Mm. Yeah, seeking approval, chapter three. Because nice mm. guys do not believe they are okay just as they are, they find a mute multitude of ways to convince themselves and others that they are lovable and desirable. They still seek validation, and not just from women, but from other guys as well. Yeah, and that's uh, what's what, one way I found it where guys like this because they like being part of a clubhouse and they like being able to say that I am label X yeah. in this space. But then you start talking about the space and they have no idea. No, but the weird thing is, nice guys hate or not necessarily hate but they have this this affinity i think that's the word affinity mm. with masculinity with other they hate competition they hate contests they hate being strong and capable things like that they just want to be equal to everybody else i have a co-worker like that and uh we were talking about bonuses and i was like yeah that would be a good idea like i've i work harder than you or my results are better i'd like to be acknowledged for that and the first thing he said was no 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 it's not like that i don't need to be better than you but i just want a bit of acknowledgement oh my god acknowledgement for what? <laughs> yeah like you're not better than me so your acknowledgement is shit here have your shit sandwich go eat it yeah which is weird too the idea of not even wanting to know who's better in whatever than you like whatever, some people are going to be better than you at some things. You're going to be better than other people at other things. 
if it's something you try your best on and somebody still beats you, then that's just the nature of the game. But going out of your way to, to never even have that question asked because then you think you can lie to yourself about it. That's a weird, weird covert contract. Last Psychologist actually had a great article on that with, uh, what was it called? When was the last time you got your ass kicked? Which probably one of the funniest psychological titles I've ever heard. <laughs> I can't even remember. Can you? Yeah, yeah. No, that's the one. That's what it's called. Yeah, I know. I know. But still. Oh, that actual question. Well, that's the thing. That wasn't what the yeah. article was about. He was referencing a uh, a uh, sketch from Louis C.K. where he had a, a teenager going over asking him all these mundane questions, but it wasn't really about that. It was just him basically browbeating him. And oh. the idea as a guy, if you avoid that question, like, am I a man or can I handle conflict or do I not need validation? Like if you don't answer that question and you go out of your way to avoid it, it makes it painfully obvious that you already know that you're not going to answer that question with a yes. Am I a man? But if you're avoiding that with, like you said, your friend with the whole, I just want recognition thing, then automatically everybody just can see, okay, you're clearly just doing this for your own ego. And everybody sees that in social media, guys who are flexing, talking about, you know, my truck, I can drop a bunch of, you know, skitter tires into my truck because I'm a man and like are you really bacon flavored beard oil yeah dude I I'm you know what I should do I really got to release those in the book because I was really proud of myself I put those are probably my best pieces of writing for the speeches at the 21 convention there that's another reason why I can't fault like I can't say an unkind word because those things wouldn't existed without uh without Anthony Johnson true and Rolo Tomasi so right and, and that's the thing, uh, a little bit of explanation about my shit posting yesterday. I <laughs> loved all the content, the Red Mill group and the, the Red Man group and the 21 convention. I had my tickets ready, things like that. But again, if people just without a reason start blocking me and things like that, even though I've acknowledged them in the open, I'm just having fun with it. Then it's all like, well, who even cares anymore when this is the standard? Hey, there's no kind of mastery like Amuse Mastery. <laughs> I'm into that. Nice. Dude, that's one of the things I really love about your channel. Like, I've been following you as far as I know, I think, since you first got on social media. But Yeah, you did. You actually, you actually do examples. You don't just talk about things. You actually are doing them. Like, we're going to talk about No More Mr. Nice Guy for I don't know how much longer here. But <laughs> the fact that I can actually see you using parts of it, too, means that you've actually internalized what you're reading. And so yeah. it's nice to hear you talk about it because then you can explain it from a much better angle, especially since your reading is fresh. True. But that's also where a lot of my anger and daily lives come from. And that's why I love Aaron Clary so much. He's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he, always, he always comes over as a very angry little man. But I think he, he just realized that, yeah, you know what? It's over. The war of masculinity has been won by the feminists. And now just enjoy the decline. People are stupid. But again with uh nice guys tend to be disconnected from other men uh comments such as i'm just not comfortable with other men i don't know what to talk about most men are jerks i used to have male friends but my wife made up such a hassle to do things with them i just gave up or i tend to be a loner and i am confronted with that so much in daily life that it just frustrates me like, in my workplace i would have loved to have a, a guy who does plumbing on the side or fixes <laughs> houses, just a capable man who still slaps his wife on the ass and eats bacon and isn't scared of cholesterol. I would have just loved that or just gave an opinion on something or made a remark about my shirts, just something, <laughs> but they're all so blatantly boring. And what's well, that's the problem now? You're a non, so I can't really focus on anything with you. It's like Carl. I can't poke fun at either of you guys because you're giving me nothing. Ah, uh, you saw my haircut. Like, I'm going to start describing you. By the way, just so you know, he's a blonde Swedish looking guy. 180 centimeters. <laughs> okay, now you're exaggerating. Mm -hmm. It's 190. <laughs> <laughs> I also use tactical soap, by the way, so my dick is over 9,000. <laughs> I, I'm old enough that I just missed the Dragon Ball Z thing, so I don't. I, I get the reference, but I've never actually seen it. It's okay. It's a lot of screaming and pouting, but it's yeah. okay. I missed it. Were... Anime. That was stuff. That stuff was vicious. Yeah, like Transformers. Oh, no, like Wicked City. <laughs> I never heard about that. Oh, there's um, 
Actually, you know what? Yeah, no, I don't even talk about it here. Don't want to get into it. But yeah, back then they had no problems making things R rated. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh, the uh, 80s. 80s cartoons were awesome. Like, even as a kid, I grew up in the 90s, but sometimes there were reruns about 80s shows. And I was always so astounded by how much violence and things they had. Oh, yeah. That's what I loved. I was kind of like right in the middle, 80s and 90s. So I got a, I got a hint of both of them, and I did like the 80s stuff better. But. Cool. Like, Kong oh, that, and Screaming and Pouting is the name of his next album. Oh, yeah. So, I guess the first track will be Over 9000. The second song will be is uh, To Go One Step Beyond, uh, Special Bean Cannon, number three, Kamehameha, number four. I could go on, but no, never mind. I want to uh, go. Uh, no, I was going to say, go. before you run off, I was going to say, I was just looking back at your Disconnected from Other Men thing, and I was noticing something I never caught until you started describing it. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that all the examples that those guys use to say why they're a great man is not actually saying they are anything? It's just by saying what they're not? So it's kind of like uh, projecting? You mean like that? I'm not sure yet. It's, I've just kind of noticed it now. It's like, I'm a great man because I'm not like that asshole. And that's essentially what it boils down to. And I'm, I was seeing it a lot, even in uh, this little beef thing that's going on lately of whoever's emoting for whatever, mm -hmm. is that nobody's actually is anything. Everybody's trying to not be something else. And I find that's, it's like the cynical teenager. He just describes life with a funny voice and goes at the end of it as if that's like an argument or that's why he's above it all. And I'm wondering how much of this uh, is. Oh, yeah. I get, what I, mean. I get what you mean. It's like, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of like the quote any man who has to say, I am the king, is no true king. Yeah. But like they aren't they, even making it that far. They're just saying, I would be a king because I'm not this. It's, yeah. But like anybody cannot be something. That's easy. You don't fire me. I quit. Yeah, I did quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, sorry, I was interrupting you. What was it you were going to ask? No, no, no. Uh, first of all, by the way, for the people who are watching live, please stick on. We're going to go on for a little while. If you're watching this on YouTube, go over to Patreon forward slash Jack Napier 368. You can watch the full version of this conversation and many others I've had with Ryan, Carl, Tanner Guzzi, Roland Tomasi, and John from Mother Life Dating for only 33 cents a day. So if you're watching on YouTube, see you there. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.